وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another episode from this short course on the Muslim family brought to you by al Madrasatul Umariya. I have a question uh, to begin this episode and, and if you've been following this short course all the way from the beginning I hope inshallah you'll be able to answer this question. Do you think there's ever a case where a man divorcing a woman could be something which is good for her? Can you think back to any evidence that we have mentioned or any narrations we have mentioned or ayat we have mentioned that might indicate or that might give us an answer to that? Have a think. So hopefully you, you had a little think about that. The one that came to mind is in the hadith of Umzar, we mentioned the woman who she complained and she said, she said that in antiq utallaq wa in askut u'allaq. If I speak, I'll be divorced and if I'm silent, I'll be left hanging. And we said that it's not allowed for a man to leave his wife stuck like that. She's neither a wife nor is she a divorcee. He doesn't let her get married to someone else and he doesn't treat her like a wife. And the reason I started with that question is that in this episode, we're going to deal with issues relating to divorce. Now again, someone might say, Muhammad Tim, are you not here to tell us about how to have happy family, happy family life? Why are we talking about divorce? But the reality is, that there are a couple of reasons why I want to talk about divorce. Number one, sometimes divorce can be the kindest thing. When the alternative to that divorce is oppression, misery, sadness, the woman being stuck without having a chance to be happy. Divorce is not haram in Islam, generally speaking. It's not haram in a, in a, in a general sense. And therefore, we shouldn't have that, you know, kind of thing that maybe some people have taken from the Christians, whereby, you know, divorce is one of the great, one of the major sins, a kabira from the kabair. In reality, for some people, it's sometimes the kindest thing. But the other reason why I want to talk about divorce is I see that some of the biggest mistakes and the things which ruin not only marriages, but ruin children's lives and ruin entire families are not knowing the proper etiquettes of divorce. And therefore, a person, when they're getting angry, they're going through marital issues and having issues of marital discord. And the end result is that they are doing un-Islamic things as it relates to the divorce. And they're sometimes ruining the situation for themselves, for their spouses, for their children, and leaving them, you know, almost living a, a life of just misery because they turn away from the sunnah in rela- rela- relation to the etiquettes of divorce. So even though, you know, I don't really want, you know, to kind of, it's not, I'm not here to inspire people to get divorced at all. In fact, the opposite, we're here to help people to have a, a happy and successful marriage. We do want people to understand their rulings and the etiquettes of it. So if it did ever happen to them, they know what to do and what not to do. And this gives the marriage a much greater chance of being saved than if they don't know what to do, in which case they find themselves in a situation where they have divorced their wife in such a way that they can't bring her back. They can't get back together again. Their children's lives are ruined. Their lives are ruined. And everything just breaks apart for the whole family. And that's not what Islam requires or what Islam advocates as it relates to divorce. So for that reason, I do believe it is important for everyone to understand the rulings of divorce and what to do and what not to do and what Islam allows and what Islam doesn't allow as it relates to divorce. And inshallah ta'ala, this won't be something that many of us have to go through. I hope that uh, 
those of us who are married, we remain in uh, happy and successful marriages, but it's something we should be aware of so that we don't fall into errors with regard to it that might end up ruining uh, the long-term viability of that marriage. And we mentioned this also in the same hadith of Umzar when we talked about the woman who said in Antiq, Utallaq, if I speak, the man will divorce me. It's a rapid fire divorce, just divorce, 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 divorce. And that is such a dangerous thing because it can honestly lead to a man cutting all of his options off and being left with no choice but to leave a woman that he actually loves and is happy with, but because he couldn't control his anger and he couldn't treat her the way she deserved to be treated, he ended up causing a problem for himself and even for his children and even for his wider family as well. So it's really important that we understand this situation and this topic, even if it's not the nicest topic that we want to talk about, but it has to be dealt with. So there are times when divorce might be the kinder thing to do, Definitely, a man should not be leaving his wife kal mu'allaqa, like she is just stuck. Neither is she a wife, nor is she a divorcee that she can go and marry someone else, nor is she a wife that he treats her well. So he kind of just leaves her stuck there, not allowing her to get on with her life and also not treating her as a wife. So in that case, it might be a merciful thing to do. But whether it's merciful or whether it's something that is supposed to be avoided, but ultimately one way or the other, it has to be done the way that Islam legislated for it to be done. That's what's really important. So in terms of the language, the word talaq, it is to, uh, it is to remove or to get yourself out of a contract. Um, so this is from the word originally from al-itlaq, which it can mean a tark, it can mean al irsal, and it is to, as we said, to undo your obligation, to remove your obligation. That's what the word originally means. And as for in the religion of Islam, it is to undo the contract of marriage by pronouncing the word talaq or divorce or similar words or similar things. So it is to undo that contract. It's a way of exiting that contract. Now, when we're going to talk about the word talaq here, and there are different ibarat, different words that ulama use, but we're going to talk about talaq here, and we're going to talk about what is in the hands of the husband. We are going to also talk about al-khula, which is in the hands of a wife, which is sometimes what some of the scholars call al-talaq bi'iwad. They call it divorce with in return for something or al khula we're going to talk about that separately inshallah right now we're talking about a man who wants to get himself out of the marriage contract that's what we're going to talk about in this particular segment inshallah ta'ala a man wants to get himself out of the marriage contract so in surah al-baqarah allah azza wa jal said fa in fa'u fa inna allaha ghafurur rahim وَإِنْ عَزَمُوا الطَّلَاقَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ If they decide to come back together, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghafoorun rahim. And if the decision is made to continue the talaq, then Allah is سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ And Allah is, then Allah is سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ and the hadith we mentioned of Abi Huraira radiallahu an qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna al-mar'ata khuliqat min dhil' lan tastaqima laka ala tariqah fa in istamta'ta biha istamta'ta biha wa biha iwaj wa in zahabta tuqimuha kasartaha wa kasruha talaquha So if you enjoy your life with her the woman she was created from the bent rib and it will never be straight for you. If you enjoy your life with her, you enjoy your life with her, and there are there, that bend is still there. And if you try to straighten her out, you will break her, and breaking her is divorcing her. Why do you think we brought this ayah and this hadith? The ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, 
وَإِنْ عَزَمُوا الطَّلَاقَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ And the hadith here, the hadith of Abi Hurairah, that, that divorce or breaking her is divorcing her. Why do you think that we brought these two texts in the topic of divorce? What can we take from these two texts? Have a think about that. Pause the video. Have a think. So inshallah ta'ala, you pause the video, you had a think. We brought these two to show that divorce without reason is something disliked to Allah Now there is a hadith which is reported which is from Al-Mushtahir ala Al-Alsina. It's very commonly reported that Abghadu Al-Halali ila Allah Al-Talaq The most hated of the halal things to Allah is Talaq. This hadith is not authentic as a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. However, there is evidence for the principle within it. And that is that divorce is something disliked to Allah Azza wa Jal unless it has a valid reason for it. And we can take that from the ayah because Allah said, وَإِنْ عَزَمُوا الطَّلَاقَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ There is a degree of threat there. There is a degree of that Allah can see everything and knows everything. If you decide to divorce her, Allah can see you and Allah knows what you're doing. So there's a degree of threat and a degree of a warning overtaking divorce to be something easy. And in this hadith of Abi Hurairah, the Prophet ﷺ described divorce as breaking her. So even though divorce is something which Allah has made permissible for the man, it is something which if it is done without a reason and without a valid reason for it, it is something that is disliked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we can take that from this evidence that we have put forward here. And Thawban radiallahu an narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, سألت زوجها طلاقا في غير ما بأس فحرام عليها رائحة الجنة Whichever woman asks her husband for divorce without him having done anything wrong for, for against her, it is forbidden for her to smell the scent of paradise. So again, this is another thing which tells us that even though divorce is something allowed for a husband to do, it is not something which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it's done without a valid reason uh, and without any, any cause uh, for it. Another evidence that we can put forward for the same principle is a hadith from Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhumah annahu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna iblis yada'u arshahu ala al-ma' ثُمَّ يَبْعَثُوا سَرَايَهُ فَأَدْنَاهُمْ مِنْهُ مَنْزِلَةً أَعْظَمُهُمْ فِتْنَةً يَجِيءُ أَحَدُهُمْ فَيَقُولُ فَعَلْتُ كَذَا وَكَذَا فَيَقُولُ مَا صَنَعْتَ شَيْئًا Iblis sends out his armies or his soldiers to do his job and the ones that are closest to Iblis in position are the ones who cause the most trouble. One of them comes and says, I did this and that. And Iblis says to him, you haven't done anything. They report back to Iblis and Iblis says, you haven't done anything. Then another one comes and says, I didn't leave that man until I broke up between him and between his wife. قال فيدنيه منه ويقول نعم أنت Iblis brings him near to him and says what an excellent job you have done, what an excellent shaitan you are, what an excellent shaitan you are that you broke up between the husband and the wife. And again, if we're talking about the details of divorce, this is a strong evidence that divorce without a reason and without a need is something which is from the, from the works of the shaitan and something which is pleasing to Iblis and is not pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal that if it's done without a need and without a reason. Despite that, it is not forbidden for a man to divorce his wife. So we have to have a balance here. We say it's permissible, it's in his hands, but every time it's done without reason, it's not something praiseworthy 
and it's not something beneficial. So a person should take it seriously and shouldn't embark upon it quickly because it is something that is being encouraged by the shaitan and not something which is encouraged by Allah Azza wa Jal unless there is a valid Islamic reason to do so. Allah Azza wa Jal said in Surah Al-Talaq, Ayah number two, فَإِذَا بَلَغْنَا أَجَلَهُنَّ فَأَمْسِكُوهُنَّ بِمَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ فَارِقُوهُنَّ بِمَعْرُوفٍ وَأَشْهِدُوا ذَوَيْ عَدْلٍ مِّنْكُمْ وَأَقِيمُوا الشَّهَادَةِ لِلَّهِ Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, and if they reach their appointed time, then either keep them in a good way or let them go in a good way. And let two people of trust, two trustworthy people among you bear witness to this and let them establish the witness for Allah. So here, this tells us a few things about the issue of divorce. It tells us that divorce is in the hands of the man and it tells us that when the idda period of the divorce finishes, then the man has either to bring his wife back in a good way and let her live with him as a wife or let her go in a good way and treat her well in both ways. It also tells us that it's recommended, although not obligatory, for there to be witnesses to the divorce and to him bringing his wife back in order for the matter to be clear um, and so that there isn't any confusion among them. So at this point, I would like just to talk about the basic structure of divorce in Islam. So a man divorces his wife. The first question is, when does he divorce his wife? When is he allowed to divorce his wife? This is mentioned in a hadith of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an or an athar or tafsir of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an with regard to the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal فَطَلِّقُوهُنَّ لِعِدَّتِهِنَّ Divorce them for their, you know, for the for their idda period. And he said about it فِي طُهْرٍ مِنْ غَيْرِ جِمَاعٍ It refers to divorcing them in a time of purity when there have not been when there has not been any intimacy between them so this is the first thing that we're going to establish about the islamic etiquette of divorce is that the only time a man is allowed to issue a talaq to issue a word of divorce to his wife is in a time of purity so she cannot be menstruating if she's on her menses he should not be issuing any divorce at that time. And that's from the softness and gentleness of Islam. Because first of all, at that time, maybe they're not as close to one another as they would otherwise be because of that intimacy not being there. Maybe she's also emotionally less uh, stable than she would otherwise be. She And there might be a reason for him to sometimes to get frustrated with her. So Islam didn't allow him to divorce her when she is on her menses. And Islam didn't allow him to divorce her in a time period where they have been intimate with one another. So if intimacy has happened, then the next time that he can divorce her is after she finishes her next menstrual cycle. So to be clear, if they've been intimate, they've been intimate with one another. After they've been intimate with one another, he has to wait until after her menstrual cycle finishes and then he can issue his divorce. He can't issue the divorce during the time, during the time period where they've been intimate with one another and he can't issue it when she's on her menses. So she has to be out of her menses and there cannot have been any intimacy between them in that since the last menstrual period. That means that typically, how long would a man have to wait before he can actually process this, he can actually go through with this divorce? Typically, on average, he's gonna have to wait probably a month or more before he can even say the words of divorce. And this shows us the misconception that so many people have that a man instantly can just divorce whenever he wants. He can just say talaq and that's it. In reality, he can't. 
just say talaq. Usually, the couple will have been intimate. That's normal part of marriage. And so he'll have to wait until, first of all, she starts the menstrual period, then she finishes the menstrual period, and they haven't been intimate once again. Then he can issue the talaq. So it's not an instant talaq, as many people think. In many situations, he will have to wait. That gives him time to think about things. It gives him time for his emotions to go down, for his anger to go down, maybe for the things that will become rectified during even that time before the talaq is even issued. So now let's presume the talaq has been issued. The talaq has been issued. The talaq has been issued, and in here, we're not going to overly complicate things by talking about the woman that hasn't been intimate with her husband and the one who is, uh, like, he divorced her before the marriage contract or after the marriage contract and before they were alone together. We're not going to go too much into that but because mostly you were talking about families. So we're talking about a situation where they've been together, they live together as husband and wife, they have been intimate with one another, the marriage is broken down, now, what does he do? So he's waited. He waits. The menstrual period starts and finishes. There's no intimacy happen between them. After that, he issues the divorce. Now, he has to wait for the idda. And the idda, like Allah Azza just said, فَطَلِّقُوهُنَّ لِعِدَّتِهِنَّ Divorce them for the extent of the idda. The idda is three menstrual periods. So now, he, it took him already a month before he could issue the divorce. Not always a month, but in many, in many cases, if not the average case, before he can even issue the talaq will take him maybe a month or a few weeks. Now he issues the talaq. One menstrual period goes. Two menstrual periods go three. If she doesn't have a menstrual periods, then it goes by mo regular months but most of them will have a regular menstrual piece. So it's going to go one, two, three. In that three months, he lives with her as a wife. She stays with him in the house. She's not allowed to go and leave the house and say, I'm going to go stay with my parents. He's not allowed to kick her out of the house. They live together as husband and wife for what is usually three full months. There's none of this talaq, 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 talaq. You know, multiple talaqs. I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you. None of this stuff. Instead, one divorce, three menstrual periods, three months typically. He stays living with her in the same house as his wife. Then he has a choice. Either he decides in that three months to take her back or to let her go. Either he's going uh, to take her back in a good way, like we said, we spoke about the ayah, he's either going to take her back in a good way, or he's going to let her go in a good way. So he's either going to keep her in a good way, He's either going to let her go in a good way, or, or, or take her back in a good way. He can take her back at any time in that idda period. And that's not in her hands because she has a different means of getting out of the marriage. She has a different process of getting out of the marriage. His process of getting out of the marriage is he waits for a time period where they have not been intimate together. She's not on her menses. There's been no intimacy. He issues the talaq. He then waits living together with her as his wife for three menstrual periods. Three months typically. They're living together. There's no second divorce. There's no divorce every month. We've heard so many weird and wonderful ideas from people about what is supposed to be done. Some people say divorce every month. Some people issue three in one go. And lots of things. Allah never sent down any authority for it. Rather, he waits. He waits, فَإِذَا بَلَغْنَا أَجَلَهُنْ And when the time comes, فَأَمْسِكُوهُنَّ بِمَعْرُوفِ He decides either to take her back, أَوْ فَارِقُوهُنَّ بِمَعْرُوفِ Or he decides to let her go in a good, in the best way. Either 
He decides to take her back. At any time in that three months, he says, I brought you back. Or he says instead that I've decided to let you go and that waits all the way till the end of the time, then he lets her go. If he lets her go or he takes her back, what happens? So if he takes her back, one talaq is counted against him. How long did it take for that one talaq to be counted? Probably between three months to four months in most cases. Between three to four months it took for that one single talaq to be counted. And he took her back. He took her back. So before the third menstrual period ended, he took her back. He said, you come back. You're my wife again. Now one single talaq is counted against him. Just one single talaq. Not three, not no go back, not marry another man, none of that stuff. One single talaq. Because he took her back. What happens then if he lets her go? If he lets her go, if he lets her go, then she separates from him, she's divorced, and they can remarry again with a new marriage contract if she gives permission, her welly gives permission, the husband is happy, she is happy, they come back together with a new marriage contract and it all starts again. That's if he lets her go. So what's this whole thing about three talaq? And then he leaves her and she has to marry someone else. What this means is when the entire process happens three times and he brings her back in those times. So here he issued the divorce. During the three periods of idda, the three menstrual periods that makes up the idda, he brought her back. That's one. Then again, he issued another divorce, maybe a year later, two years later, three years later. Again, he waited the three periods. He brought her back before it ended. He brought her back. Then again, he issued a third divorce. Now she is broken from him on a permanent basis and she can't marry him again unless she marries someone else and is intimate with them. And then if he divorces her and then comes back again, that's not the norm. But sadly, what's happened in talaq these days is people have made the three times permanent talaq, the normal way of behavior, the first time they get in an argument with their wife. So he issues three times divorce, sends out, then they have all kinds of haram happening. The woman is arranging her marriage to someone else, what ayadu billah, and he will ask Allah's safety for that, for, for the brothers and sisters who, are, who even contemplate such a thing, that they are even contemplating arranging a marriage for their wife with someone else, because he's given a divorce three times and all this kind of innovations and evil as it relates to divorce. The three times rule is that the divorce process happened three times. So he divorced her in the Idda period, he brought her back. He divorced her in the Idda period, he brought her back. Now the third time he has only choice. His own choice is either divorce her and let her go for good or either bring her back. And that's what is mentioned in the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, At-Talaqu Marratan. At-Talaqu Marratan. Talaq is twice. فَإِمْسَاكُمْ بِمَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ تَسْرِيحٌ بِإِحْسَانٍ Either you hold her in good or you let her go. But once it gets to the third one, then that third one, when the process has happened three times, there's no going back after that. Uh, after that, فَلَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ She's not allowed for him after that. مِنْ بَعْدُ حَتَّى تَنْكِحَ زَوْجًا غَيْرَهُ Until she marries a, a different husband. And the meaning of tenkah here is she's intimate and she has intimacy with another husband. And then he divorces her and uh, maybe after a long time. And then she goes back to the first husband that she had. But that is extremely, extremely rare. And it's certainly not something that could ever be deliberately organized or arranged. It's something that might in a rare number of cases happen that a woman got divorced three times permanently. She left her husband, she got married again. Maybe she had children. And then again, she got divorced and she decided to go back to the first husband. And this is nadir. It's very, very rare that that happens. And as for this becoming like some kind of norm in divorce where the three times divorce and then the man is looking for ways out and the woman is looking for or the woman is looking for ways out then this is not from the things which Allah has legislated 
So we're still talking about the topic of divorce. That's all we have time for. We're going to come back to talk more about the divorce and also to talk about the khula in the next episode. And Allah Azza wa Jalla knows best. Wa salatu wa salam. Ala Nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.